Now the title of this particular lesson, we are talking about inserting and deleting columns, rows and cells. If we take our sample sales with data file, and we have on the forecast sheet, a column for 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and suddenly you decide to start recording things by half year, then we need to be able to move things around, insert some columns and rows. So if I want to firstly insert a row between one and two, I select row two, and then the actual insert command can be accessed from a number of places, either the right click, you can see the insert on there, or on the home ribbon, we have insert and sheet rows. So either of those options will do, and I have a new sheet row. Now they are not renumbered. I've now got a new two and a new three. So we've shifted everything down a row, which then allows us to put in half yearly numbers here. So I need a column between B and C, so I select C. It's important which column you select, and again, which row you select before you ask for insert, because it will always insert the columns to the left, and it will always insert rows above. So I need to select column C, and then I can go over here to insert, and you'll see now that insert columns is available. And I get a new column. I need to do the same between D and E. So I go to select E, right click, insert, and I get a new column, and the same here. Right click, insert, and I get a new column. That then allows me to put fall and summer. We can then select both of these. Fall and summer selected. Fall and summer, fall and summer, fall and summer. So I've been able to insert rows and columns. Simply by selecting the row you want to go above, the column you want to go to the left of. You don't have to insert one row or one column at a time. You can do multiple. If I wanted a few more between the total, I could select row six, seven, and eight, go to insert rows, and I get three rows, and everything now shifts down, so the total now becomes row nine. And I can add my new people, Jane, Jenny, and Joe, and then start typing their figures in. So that's inserting multiple rows, and I could do the same for columns. Now at some point, you want to be able to get rid of rows and columns. Perhaps we don't want Sue's data, well, we select the row we no longer require and either right click, delete, or delete sheet rows. And the whole row goes and effectively you are shifting everything back up. We could do the same with columns. So I could highlight H and I, right click, delete, and those two columns are gone and everything moves back along to the left. Let's take out 2012. So I highlight B and C, right click, delete, and everything moves back along to the left. There are occasions when you actually want to delete a single cell. That might be this cell here. So I click on the cell, I go up to the delete option on the home ribbon, and choose delete cells. Now when you're deleting a cell, you have a number of choices. If I take this cell out, there'll be a little hole in my sheet. So really Excel wants to know what to do about filling that hole in. Does it shift everything? So everything from the right moves along to the left. So this number would go there. Or do I shift the cells up? So this cell would go here. Or do you actually mean to delete the entire row? Or do you mean the entire column? In which case 2013 fall will go and the summer will move up. Well, I just want that single value to go and we'll move all the other cells up one in that column. Okay, the cell goes its contents go, and all the cells below move up, but none of the cells around it change. So we've been able to add in and take away columns and rows that don't actually add in or take away columns and rows to your sheet, but they do move the contents around en masse.